Good morning, um, Cambridge. Welcome back. Today is Monday, April 27, 2020. I hope you had an amazing weekend. And here we are. We're ready to start a new week of online learning. We are going to start off with reviewing the sentence that we recently learned, okay? So I'm going to read that sentence in red. A dozen typists approached the stairs. Everyone say that sentence with me. Get ready. Yes, a dozen typists approached the stairs. Now, everybody, um, what's another word for dozen? Or what's another, way, another word for 12? For 12, get ready. Yes, dozen. What do we call people whose job is to type things neatly? Get ready. Yes, typists. And what word means that you moved towards something or to move towards something? Get ready. Yes, approached. Let's say the sentence one more time. A dozen typists approached the stairs. Get ready. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and put this away. Now, everybody, today we're going to be doing lesson 74 on page 195. So go ahead and if you need time to get to page 195, click pause. And when you're on page 195, click play so we can start. Okay, very important that everyone is slanting and that you're tracking. So everyone's finger on number one. Word one is chief. What word? Yes, chief. Spell chief. Get ready. Word two is arrange. What word? Yes, arrange. Spell arrange. Get ready. When things are arranged, the things are in place. If pillows are arranged, the pillows are in place. Here's another way of saying the cans were in place. The cans were arranged. Your turn. What's another way of saying the cans were in place? Get ready. Yes. The cans were arranged. What's another way of saying the chairs were in place by the table? Get ready. Yes, the chairs were arranged by the table. Let's go to word three. Word three is factory. What word? Yes, factory. Spell factory. Get ready. Word four is practice. What word? Yes, practice. Spell practice. Get ready. Stop right there. Things that you practice are things that you do again and again. Here's another way of saying, she plays the piano again and again. She practices playing the piano. Your turn, what's another way of saying, she plays the piano again and again? Get ready. Yes, she practices playing the piano. Go to word five. Word five is adventure. What word? Yes, adventure. When you have an adventure, you do something very exciting. Here's another way of saying, she did something very exciting. Listen, she had an adventure. Your turn. What's another way of saying, she did something very exciting? Get ready. 
Yes, she had an adventure. Word six is comfortable. What word? Yes, comfortable. When something feels comfortable, it feels pretty good. Everybody, what's another way of saying her shoes felt pretty good? Get ready. Yes, her shoes felt comfortable. All right. What's another way of saying the chair felt pretty good? Get ready. Yes, the chair felt comfortable. All right. Let's read those words again the fast way. Word one. What word? Yes, chief. Word two. What word? Yes, arrange. Word three. What word? Yes, factory. Word four. What word? Yes, practice. Word five. What word? Yes, adventure. Word six. What word? Yes, comfortable. Got a column two, the yellow column. Right. All these words have endings. Word one. What word? Yes, excused. Word two. What word? Yes, staring. Word three. What word? Yes, faintly. Word four. What word? Yes, winked. Word five. What word? Yes, vehicles. Word six. What word? Yes, duct. Everybody go to column three. Word one. What word? Yes, complain. Let me see if I can put this closer. All right. Word two, what word? Yes, complaint. A complaint is a statement that tells what you don't like about something. A complaint about a movie tells what you didn't like about the movie. What would a complaint about a meal tell? Get ready. Yes, what you didn't like about a meal. What would a complaint about workers digging up the street tell? Get ready. Yes, what you didn't like about workers digging up the street. Word three is garage. What word? Yes, garage. Word four, what word? Yes, weather. Word five. What word? Yes, bucket. Let's read these words again the fast way. One, what word? Yes, complain. Two, what word? Yes, complaint. Three, what word? Yes, garage. Four, what word? Yes, weather. Five, what word? Yes, bucket. Awesome. Go to column four. Word one. What word? Yes, liar. Word two. What word? Yes, soup. Word three. What word? Yes, clever. Word three. What word? Yes, respond. Word five. What word? Yes, demand. Everybody find part B in your book. Right here, right below your words. Now, we are going to read the story two times. First, you by yourself, then I to you and ask you questions. Click pause and read it by yourself. When you are done, you're going to click play and it's going to be my turn to read the story to you and ask you questions. So everybody click pause and to go read it on your own. Go.
Okay, now that you click play, that means that you're ready for me to read to you the story and ask you questions. Very important that you're tracking and listening big as Ms. Hernandez reads. Get ready. Bertha tests some water. The drive to Building 9 was probably three miles. Bertha was riding with Donna in Donna's car and Maria was following them in the van. On the way to Building 9, Donna tried to be friendly. She talked about the weather and about what she planned to do next month when she went on her vacation. But Bertha's nose told her that Donna felt very uneasy. Stop right there. Everybody, what's another word for uneasy? Think big. Get ready. Yes, nervous. Nervous is another word for uneasy. Boys and girls, what's another word for uneasy? Get ready. Yes, nervous. Everybody turn the page. Okay. You're tracking. Building 9 looked like a giant garage. More than a dozen trucks and cars were parked inside. Workers were working on three of the vehicles. Stop right there. Everybody, how many is a dozen? Get ready. Yes, 12. Look at the garage in the picture. Touch Donna's car. Get ready. Now, touch one of the cars a worker is fixing. Get ready. So over here is Donna's car. Here is the car that they're fixing. All right? Okay. Go back to tracking. My turn to read. You're tracking. As Bertha left Donna's car, Donna said, I've got to go back to my desk. Big Ted will take care of you. He's the head of this garage. Or below the picture, keep tracking. Big Ted was one of the biggest people Bertha had ever seen. The top of Bertha's head came up to Big Ted's chest. Stop right there. Everybody, there's no picture of Big Ted. So close your eyes and get a picture of how big he is. Imagine how high the top of Bertha's head is next to Big Ted. Okay, all right. Everybody, keep tracking. You want water? You got water, Big Ted announced in an unfriendly way. He turned around, picked up a bucket full of water, and placed it on the floor in front of Maria. We're at the top of the next page. Some water spilled over the side of the bucket. Water, water, Big Ted said, smiling. You want it? We've got it. He turned around and winked at one of the other men. Stop right there. Look how Big Ted turned and winked. Get ready. Probably like that, right? Right. Now, what kind of signal was he giving the man he winked at? Get ready. Yes, they were tricking Maria and Bertha. He was making fun of them. Keep tracking. Bertha said, where did you get this water? Big Ted said, from the refinery, of course, Bertha said. And how did the water get to the refinery? From a well, Ted responded without smiling. Stop right here. Where did he say the water came from? Get ready. Right, from a well. That's where the water is supposed to come from. Do you think Ted is telling the truth? Get ready. No. Keep tracking. Not so, Bertha said. This water came from that truck over there. She pointed to a tank trunk, to a tank truck that had the words Reef Oil Refinery painted on it. And that truck got the water from a place that must be 20 miles south of here. Stop right there. Everybody touched that truck in the picture. Get ready. Yep, right over here where my finger's pointing to, you should be pointing to as well. Okay, now take your finger back to where we were. 
Ready? Keep tracking. It's from a stream that leads to the ocean. It did not come from a well. Hey, Ted shouted, who is this kid? He bent down so that his face almost touched Bertha's. Are you calling me a liar? Stop right there. Everybody, how do you think Bertha feels now? Get ready. Probably scared, right? All right. Bertha swallowed. Some of the men who had been work working on the vehicles were staring. Bertha looked down. Her heart was pounding. With all her power, she made herself say this. I don't mean to call you a liar. I'm just telling you where the water came from. Don't pick on her, Maria shouted. Her voice echoed through the large garage. She's telling the truth, and you know it. Stop right there. Everybody, I'll read the scary part again. You close your eyes and get a picture of how Bertha must have felt. Keep your finger there while I read. Hey, Ted shouted, who is this kid? He bent down so that his face almost touched Bertha's. Are you calling me a liar? Bertha swallowed. Mm. Some of the men who had been working on the vehicles were staring. Bertha looked down. Her heart was pounding. With all her power, she made herself say this. I don't need to call you a liar. I'm just telling you where the water came from. Don't pick on her, Maria shouted. Her voice echoed through the large garage. She's telling the truth, and you know it. Everybody, open your eyes. Does Maria act like she's afraid of Big Ted? Get ready. No, she doesn't. Keep tracking. Big Ted stared at Maria. Then he smiled. Okay, okay, he said. The kid looks at water and can tell where it comes from. You believe her instead of me? If that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stop you. Everybody turn the page. Ted walked to a man standing by the phone. Call Daniels, Ted said. Tell him to get down here right now. Okay, stop right there. Why do you think he's calling for Mr. Daniels? Get ready. Yes, he probably wants to tell him what Bertha said. Keep tracking. Ted smiled. Stop right there. The next sentence has an underlined word. Remember to read it in a louder voice. I will read that in a louder voice. You track. Ready? If you girls will excuse me, I've got other things to do. Stop right there. Ted is making fun of Maria and Bertha. How can you tell that from what he said? Get ready? He called them girls. All right? Keep tracking. Ted walked away, and Bertha and Maria were once more standing all done in the middle of a huge garage. None of the workers looked at them. Nobody talked to them. Within two minutes, Donna's car pulled up in front of the building. Mr. Daniels got out of the car. What's the problem? He said as he walked toward Maria. Plenty, Maria shouted. Bertha didn't know that Maria could shout that loudly. The worker stopped and began to stare again. What kind of tricks are you trying to pull? Maria demanded. Stop right there. Say that question the way Maria said it. Get ready. Yes. What kind of tricks are you trying to pull? Keep tracking. Before Mr. Daniels could answer, she continued, you bring us out here to a garage and show us some water that you brought in by a truck. Why don't you just take us to the place where you are using the water? Let us test that water. Well, Mr. Daniel said, looking away from Maria, I can't do that. I just can't. Why not? Maria demanded. Mr. Daniels looked up. You'll have to come back on another day. You cannot go to the refining buildings today. 
Just a minute, Maria said. If you throw us out, I'm coming back with the police. I'm an investigator for the state, and you'd better remember that. We're at the top of the next page. Mr. Daniels turned around and smiled faintly. Stop right there. What do you think he was thinking? Get ready. Yes, probably that he was already in trouble. Everybody, how do you think he did that when he smiled faintly? Get ready. Mm, probably like halfway there. Let's finish the story. He didn't say a word, but his expression was filled with hate. He ducked into Donna's car, and the car moved slowly down the road. Stop right there. More next time. So, awesome. I bet you did amazing tracking and answering the questions. You're going to answer 17 questions from your big book, and then you're going to go to your workbook and do lesson um, 74 as well, front and back. Please don't forget to send Ms. Amandas a picture of your work so that I can give you your doozy grade. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful Monday. Bye, Cambridge.